Shalom, hello everyone. It's Emily Jane again, and I'm here to bring a little light into your world, or Ha'olam. We went over Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year, in my previous video, and this one is about Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur is a little more of a somber, serious, reflective holiday that lands 10 days after Rosh Hashanah. Many people spend this week and a half reflecting and thinking about their previous year and maybe some ways they might want to change it for this next year to come. Many families honor the day of Yom Kippur by spending some time in synagogue, going to a body of water to throw breadcrumbs in, wearing white, and most importantly, by fasting. Fasting means you don't eat after dinner until the next day at dinner. And this gives people some time to think about things they're really sorry about. Maybe even give you a new perspective on all the things that you do have and things that you should be thankful for all year, not just on this one day of Yom Kippur. So I'm hoping today that we can take a walk down to a body of water, read one of my favorite stories, New Year at the Pier, and talk about Yom Kippur. Let's get started. New Year at the Pier by April Halpern Wayland, illustrated by Stephanie Jorish. Izzy loves this changing time of year. Some days sunglasses, some days sweaters, apples, honey, the sound of the shofar, and his favorite part of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, Tashlich. Everyone makes I'm sorry lists before Tashlich. Mom is on the patio, writing fast. Miriam is on the grass, thinking. Izzy puts rock on his paper so it won't blow away. He doesn't make a list. He draws pictures, but he does count on his fingers. One, two, three. Three things he's sorry for. What is Izzy sorry for? He sticks up one finger for drawing on Miriam's forehead while she was sleeping. Two fingers for losing mom's ring at the grocery store. And three Three fingers for breaking Mrs. Bickerson's drum, the old one they weren't even supposed to touch. Is that it? Just three? Suddenly, Izzy remembers there's one more. Ugh, he wishes there weren't. He wishes he forgot that one. He slowly puts up four fingers, promising he wouldn't tell anyone that Ben sucks his thumb, and then telling. On Rosh Hashanah, as soon as they get to synagogue, Izzy joins his friends playing tag. You're it, a kid says, pointing a finger at Izzy. Izzy looks at his own finger. He runs to his sister. Miriam, he whispers. I'm sorry I drew on your forehead. Huh? I'm sorry I drew space dog. Oh, that? No big deal, she says. Okay, he says, and runs off with friends. Then he stops to rest. Miriam looks at her list and then at Izzy. Uh, I'm not going to call you a snot anymore. I'm sorry. Uh, I like being a big snot, he says, pulling a ribbon from her hair. Izzy, Miriam says, stomps on his foot. Hey, Izzy yells. Mom walks up. Peace, kids, she says, putting up two fingers. Izzy looks at his own two fingers. This one is going to be harder. Mom, Izzy says, looking at his shoe. I'm sorry I lost your ring. Oh, I know you're sorry, honey. Thanks. I'm sorry for something too. His eyes got big. Mom is sorry. I'm sorry for always being on the phone, she says. I'll try not to answer when we are playing. Okie dokie. Mom squeezes his hand and he squeezes back. The door's open. It's time to take their seats. When services are over, everyone walks to the beach. Rabbi Neil, Cantor Livia, and all the families. At the top of the hill, Izzy counts three figures, Mrs. Bickerson and her two dogs. And Izzy looks at his three fingers. His heart pounds like her drum used to, but maybe he doesn't have to say it to her right now. Yes, he does. No, no, he doesn't. Well, look who's here. Hello, Izzy, says Mrs. Bickerson. Hi, Miss Bickerson, he mumbles. I'm... I, uh, good heavens, Miss Bickerson cries as the dogs drag her up the street. Sorry to be running off, dear. Come visit next week. Whew. Izzy runs down the hill to catch up with the others. When he gets to the pier, Rabbi Neil is saying, Tashlich is a time we apologize for the things we wish we hadn't done. Tashlich means to throw. We throw the things we don't like or don't need. Tashlich is the cleaning of your heart's closet. A new year, a clean heart. Just this summer, Izzy and Miriam cleaned their toy closet and gave away a lot. Now it seems bigger. Sometimes he just opens the closet just to see how clean it is. 
They all troop up to the pier singing a Venu volcano. The melody moves inside Izzy and in a sad and happy way. He feels a part of the wind, a part of the waves, a part of everybody singing. At the head of the pier, everyone crowds around Rabbi Neil and Ben's dad. They both put shofars to their lips. They blow, whose note will last the longest? Izzy and Miriam pretend they're blowing shofars and count to 10. They run out of breath, but the men keep blowing. Izzy runs around in 10 circles. He's very dizzy, but the men keep blowing. Finally, Rabbi Neil's shofar runs out of sound and Ben's dad squawks out one last note. Everyone laughs and claps. And now it's time. Mom hands them slices of old bread. Izzy rips pieces and whispers. This one's for drawing space dog on Miriam's forehead. He throws it into the water. This one's for mom's ring, Izzy says, tossing another, sorry, into the sea. He breathes the salty air. His heart feels cleaner. And look at those seagulls. They love Tashlich too. So do the fish. Suddenly, Ben is right next to him. Um, Izzy, I'm sorry I never helped you find your yellow notebook. His notebook? That's right. Ben didn't help look for it. Just hearing Ben say sorry makes Izzy feel better. That's okay, he says. He smiles down at their four shoes side by side and then remembers the fourth thing on his list. Ugh, he has to tell Ben. Well, maybe he doesn't. Yeah, yeah, he does. They sit together on the bench looking out to the sea. Ben is bouncy and hummy. Izzy is slouchy. Okay, Izzy takes a deep breath of ocean air. Ben, I'm sorry I told your secret. About sucking my thumb? Yeah, the seagull's call. It was mean. I'm sorry. He wishes Ben would say something and finally says, Izzy? Yeah? We've been friends for a long, long time, right? Right. So because we've been friends for such a long, long, long time, you're 100% forgiven. Really? Izzy looks at Ben and smiles. Okay, and from now on, I promise to keep your secrets secret. Izzy says, feeding a piece of bread to Ben. And I promise to help you look for everything you lose, Ben says. They toss pieces of bread out to the fish, out to the sea, out to the waves. Izzy's heart feels as big as the ocean. But what about Mrs. Bickerson's? Izzy decides he'll talk to her later, soon. He throws another piece into the sea for Mrs. Bickerson's drum. Ben and Izzy toss the last bits into the wind. Izzy loves this changing time of year. Some days sunglasses, some days sweaters. The sound of the shofar and the salty smell of the sea. Time to think about his family and his whole wide windy world. Everyone sings one last song and they slowly walk home, holding hands in a family and friends chain with empty bread bags and clean, wide open hearts. The end. We're here at the Puget Sound waterfront for our Tashlich walk. Tashlich translates to cast off. So people throw breadcrumbs into the water to symbolize their sins that they're apologizing for. And as the water absorbs, it symbolizes their forgiveness. So come join me as we get closer to the water. There's Tashlich can look different all over the world. Here, I have a beautiful large body of water. Growing up, I recall throwing breadcrumbs into a kiddie pool behind my synagogue. I'm thankful that I can throw breadcrumbs into this water. Have it symbolize things that I am sorry for, my reflections, things that I would like to change for the year to come. What's something you might be reflecting about this year or someone you might reach out and apologize to? Thank you for joining me again as we looked a little deeper into the Yom Kippur holiday. Wishing you and your family a reflective and heart-filled Yom Kippur.